Yeah, it's still a bit sticky. Let's try it again. Slowly increase. Hi guys, here we are, continuing the further adventures of the Hornby P2. Now then, I got absolutely frustrated with the bad running today. So I have now removed the original motor. That's it with the flywheel. It is quite clunky. Just here is the proposed replacement motor. Now, um, you just see the controller in the background there. If I just slowly turn the power up, look, there it is, it's, it springs into life here. Yeah? And it pretty much does that in both directions. This is the five pole replacement that's been mentioned on the RM web. There we go. Now, if I connect up the old motor, now watch as I slowly increase power. And more power, and more power, and there it kicks into life. It's impossible to get that very slow ticking over. There we go, straight into life. And it's in either direction. A little bit better that way. But not a lot. So I do propose, despite having some reservations about no flywheel, um, because it does make a difference. I do just ramp the motor up a bit of speed, let you see. What I'm going to do is shut the power off on this little button on the controller up here. Look. Ready? Here and see the slow run down. Whereas, thing. shut the power off, stops. So the flywheel is having an effect which would be useful when the locomotive encounters gaps in the track or whatever. So, but because of the bad running of the old original motor, I'm very tempted to replace it. Now I've took apart the P2. There are screws there and there, which hold this weight on, and it disengages via a clever little hook and claw just here, and then you can get into see the gear mechanism. Everyone, right, the new motor is in place. And the new motor is a Hornby Spare X9108. It doesn't have the flywheel, but now when I slowly increase power, let's watch what happens. Look at that. And backwards. That's what you want. You can't have this jerking into life business. And bear in mind this motor hasn't been running at all. And the noise is reduced. Now she does hook on these points and get stuck. Whereas previously I think the flywheel kept it going. So I'm going to have a little look and see if I can add some capacitors to act as an electronic flywheel. I very much doubt that it's going to work and I'll give it a try and report back to you. So, even though it looked identical to the original motor, I found I had to file the front plastic plate down of the front of the motor in order for it to fit between the two mounting points and even at the end there it was quite a tight fit but because of the clever lug and um, hook arrangement on the weight that held the worm down quite nicely and as you see she runs okay so the motor might not be an absolute drop-in replacement but it can be easily made to be one the flywheel is another issue okay this yellow thing you see here is a 10 microfarad 63 volt non-polarized electrolytic capacitor form of electronic flywheel hmm. probably needs to be almost a thousand microfarad or more really but let's see if it is any better over the point let's 
And it stumbles a little bit. Perhaps not as much. Okay, it looks horrible, but this is just for test. I've added two 10 microfarad capacitors, so we've now got 20, which is double what we had. Let's see what she's like. I don't know, but it just seems slightly better to me. So I need to find space inside to fit those two capacitors. OK, the capacitors are in place. The first one I placed up here by the DCC chips, connected there and there. That goes across the uh, pickup feed. And the other one I put here, which is where Hornby's original little filter to stop TV interference and that is in place. Plenty of room down in there, just a case of tucking it in. When you're doing this, there's a point in case here, we can zoom in on this. Just here, the valve gear can unclip. So it just goes on that square peg. Make sure both sides are in place. That can easily come undone. So what I'll do, I'll put the body back on, make sure everything still fits. And uh, we'll give her a whirl. So there's the P2 with its two capacitors, new motor, body back on, let's have a try. Ah, look at that, that's better. That's more like I would have expected really. Well, that's a difference. Still a slight stumble on that point, but then, to be fair, most of my locos do. Let's actually... Um, run her through all the points, I haven't done that yet see what result there is there oh, that's not too bad at all that horrible grinding noise that she had has gone as well Well, I'm sure there'll be other videos of this loco, but there we are, motor upgrade. This is the original P2 motor, it's fitted by Hornby. Got it on um, static test, as you can see, offload. Um, seems to start turning at about 4 volts and jumps into life, the problem we know. But also, as it's running, you can hear it varying in speed quite considerably, slowing down all of a sudden. There it goes. And there it comes back up again. Oh, didn't it?